Well, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I was going to show you how I'm going to decorate the front and the back of this little DIY art journal that we made last week. Um, we made this just out of some random packaging. This just happened to be a uh, Stabilo Woody box, little art box that I cut down and made a front cover and a back cover and we cut down some paper and put it in uh, put disc binders on it so this journal uh, the way it is cost me three dollars to make i thought that was pretty funny that's awesome so uh, now if you kind of followed along and did something similar, you could, um, you know, the choice is yours, whatever you decide you want to do. Uh, you could leave it like this if you think that's uh, cute. If you have some good looking packaging and you want to leave that, then, you know, by all means do that. But I want to take it up a notch and I want it to be cute because it's my art journal. And um, that's just, what I felt like doing. So I'm gonna decorate the front, uh, you know, the outside, the inside of the front and the back. And then we will see about putting a closure on there. I do have uh, just some little bitty thin elastic that I just happen to have. Uh, little skinny, I don't know, that's probably an eighth of an inch. And then I found a random button. So we will see uh, in a little bit about using those. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is if you're using some sort of packaging that's shiny like this, you've got to knock the shine off of it in order for whatever you're going to do to stick. So what I wanted to do was to use a piece of jelly print that I did a while back. I just really loved how this turned out super grungy and I think that's going to make an awesome cover for the front and the back. So I picked this. Um, I also have some brown paper bag that I thought would be fun to use uh, as the liner on the inside. But like I was saying, you have to have something to knock the shine off. And uh, I have clear gesso here, which you could also use the white gesso. Uh, they'll both work, but I'm gonna use the clear because I did an experiment a while ago and I can use the clear gesso to not only add tooth to the surface, but it will also actually glue down the paper and it'll stick. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do there. So I've already taken the front cover loose here. And what I'm going to do is mark where I want to cut this at. So I'm going to go straight to the edge on the binding side. And I'm going to leave a little extra overlap around the other three sides. And I figured that if I cut this in half, and that and this is just an eight and a um, eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, that that'll give me just enough to be able to hang off the side for the front and the back. So let's see, I marked that. And then I'm just going to get my paper trimmer. And we'll cut this in half. Okay. And this white edge that's left over, I'll have to get creative uh, on the back side. But this is what I'm going to use for the front. All right. 
So, um, we'll flip this over and see where we need to cut the bottom. So I probably want about a quarter inch on the three sides, give or take. So, probably there. I will cut the bottom. Right there. And we have goodies left over. I'll try to get these about the same. Let's go. Now you could paint directly on the cover as long as you put the gesso down first. Then you can uh, paint with acrylics or uh, whatever you want to use on the front. You can just keep in mind though, if you use clear gesso on the front and you're going to paint over it, that if you use a light colored paint, you may be able to see your pattern through it of your packaging and that may not be something you want you know you may not want to see all this through your paint so in that case i would probably stick with the um, white gesso because that'll cover it all up all right and i'm going to glue this down before we do any folding or trimming so I'm going to get, I've just got a piece of deli paper so I don't make a big mess on my stuff. And I'm just going to put the gesso all over the cardboard. We'll start with a little bit. And I'm just going to use a silicone spreader. You can use a brush or uh, like a bowl scraper whatever you have we're going to want to make sure that we coat this all the way to the edges It doesn't have to be super thick. Just try to get a good even coat. I'm just trying to make sure I get all the way to the edge here. Okay. Remove that because otherwise I will have a mess. Double check what side goes where. And I'm going to line up this side in the middle. Nope, that's not quite in the middle. That's pretty good. Ugh. This over my fingers, and then I want to use something to make sure it's stuck down real well, uh -oh. and there's no air bubbles. You could use a brayer, phone folder. I just have this little plastic guy. And we'll turn it over, make sure that's even, no bubbles. Okay. 
Oh, that's going to look good. I like it. That's going to look good. All right, I'm going to set this one aside. Let that dry. I'm going to do the back one, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now we have the front and the back mostly dry. We've got those covered. Something that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning was if you don't have any gesso, you can still do this. Um, get you a little piece of uh, like fine grain sandpaper and just scuff up the front and the back where the shiny side is. And that'll help your paint or paper stick to it. And then if you don't have any of that, I would just flip it to the shiny side on the inside. And then, uh, you know, maybe you don't care as much what's on the inside. All right, so we have this front and back. And then before we do anything with the other paper, we're going to have to repunch holes. So let me grab that real fast. Okay, I went and grabbed my hole punch. I got the, just use the same one you did to punch the holes in your uh, covers. And then what I did was just punch another uh, scratch sheet of paper just to make for sure that everything lines up because I'm going to have to punch through there again and I don't want to make it all wonky. <laughs> so, let's see. you know what? We're going to say. Hmm. I didn't like this. All right, let me think. You know what? Let's, before we punch the holes, let's go ahead and fold these edges down and glue those on the inside. Just the only thing is you don't want to put your outside cover on, your inside cover on, and cover up your holes before you punch those again because you won't be able to find them. All right. So I'm going to start with the back here. And these edges are just going to fold to the inside. So I just kind of lightly score them. Make a line where they're going to be. And I just go kind of slow, especially with jelly print because you might kind of flake that paint that's on there if you go you fold it in half too fast all right and then we'll just take some scissors and cut the corner off and you kind of cut it at a little u shape right through that It's a little more right through where those are, uh, where the intersection of those two folds comes together. So, and then you can double check, make sure it looks good. That looks good. That one does. All right. Then we will get the glue. I am going to use this art glitter glue, not for any particular reason other than it is a good glue, but it's got this um, tiny little uh, precision tip and it does, does work very nicely, but you can use glue stick, uh, Fabri-Tac, school glue, whatever you got. I'm going to do both at the top and the bottom first. And then we'll fold the side in.
Okay. And then we'll fold this one and it'll kind of overlap those edges there. Kind of trying to spread that glue around. So that it gets all the way to the edge. And you can use your bone folder or sprayer, credit card. Make sure everything is down smooth. Mm, that looks good. Good, good. Okay. Now let's punch the holes and I'll do the front one off camera. All right. Let's see how I did it last time. Yep. Must have been like this. All right. Let's cross our fingers. Not making new holes. Okay, well, that's not too bad. All right, looks good. All right, let me do the front one and I'll be right back. Okay, we got the front and the back uh, glued down and holes stapled in them, and I think they are looking fantastic. Love it, love it. All right. So then for the inside, and you guys don't have to do this, uh, you can paint the inside. You can do whatever your heart desires. But I think I'm going to take some of this brown paper bag and tear it. Just do some little torn edges and just kind of line the inside. Then you could stamp on it or write on it, anything you want. Wouldn't it be funny to have the Albertsons writing on the inside? Of course, we can flip these over. All right, so I just kind of tore this open here. All right, let's see how much we're going to need. And then I'm just going to use a ruler and tear what I need. So we can tear along that edge right there. And we won't need any extra overlap this time. Oops. Well, I didn't get a very clean tear. That's okay. All right. So that will go inside there. Well, that's already looking pretty good. Let's see. I just really want to make sure that it covers up the edge of the inside. I don't want to leave that white showing either. All right, I think that's going to be okay. So let's see. Put this stuff around here. Really, it's easier if you put the ruler over the small part and tear from the, the big piece instead of trying to do it like this. This is the hard way. 
there and there. And then just the inside of this. See how much easier that is when you do it like that. I try to do things the easy way, and I always do them the hard way. So don't do it like I do it. <laughs> it's not too bad. <clears throat> it's not perfect, but it's really not meant to be. Uh, not too bad. All right, I like that. Let's do another one. Here, let me uh, pause for a minute and do this part. It'll be the same as the other one. Okay. I went ahead and got that brown paper torn and I just glued it down with a glue stick. I used this Yoohoo, which is what I have, um, and glued the whole thing and put that down, smeared out all the bubbles, and then just re punched the holes on both sides. I didn't fear you guys want to stick around and watch all that. So. That's done. Now you can tell I've got like this going on and I kind of want to uh, conceal that a little bit plus kind of grunge the edges up some. So I think what I'm going to do, get my deli paper back, is I'm going to use some of this Liquitex. Uh, it's acrylic ink. This one is transparent raw umber. Oh, I need to shake it up. And we are just going to kind of distress with this. Now you can use a sponge. You can use your finger, which I probably will do a little bit of. Um, I also have this little sponge tool, which I may use here in a minute. This is something that they use in. Um, like for, I guess, rubber cement, I think, leather work and just some random sponge on a stick. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put a little around here and then just gonna kind of rub it around. I don't want it super dark. Oh, I think that's going to look good once it's dry. Probably I'm going to have brown fingers for a couple of days. I want this to look pretty random, like I don't want a straight line or anything. Oh, all came out at once. So I'm not putting very much on at a time. And I'm not squeezing that dauber either. The dropper, I'm not squeezing that. I just kind of let it flow out because it will come out in a hurry. And if you had, uh, let's say, an ink pad, uh, like that Tim Holtz vintage photo, or I think it's uh, maybe walnut stain, you could use uh, an ink blending brush and go around the edges. So this stains quickly, I'm noticing. So I wouldn't put your ink around like the whole side of the page and then come back and try to blend it. 
because it's going to leave a mark where it's at. Just in case that matters to you. That's looking really good. I like it. If I get a little on the front, that's okay too, because that's where we're headed next. See, this is too like straight of a line for me. I don't like that. Want it to look imperfect, perfectly imperfect. All right, that is looking pretty grungy. Let's see what happens. Front here. Right, it did kind of cover that white up pretty good. Thought I may have to get the paint out. And if it goes too far in where you don't want it, let me sorry for the noise. You can grab a baby wipe and just clean up anything that you don't like just as long as you can get it pretty quick all right let's see here let's blank getting off my paper it's a mistake oh that's looking pretty good okay uh-oh. See that wipe right up. On that paint, the previous paint on that jelly plate, jelly print, it doesn't... Uh, Stain as heavy as it does on that paper bag. Okay, I'm going to do the other one. I'll be right back. Okay, let me show you guys what I did. So I had that acrylic ink going around the inside of the edges. And it gave me a very sharp contrast between the edges and the inside was very light. And it was just too much for my liking. So I just went through and mixed a little bit of this uh, acrylic ink and mixed it with a uh, like a titanium buff, a little bit of water, and then just used my fingers and just kind of smeared it around and blended all that in. 
So I really like much better the way that uh, it's turned out. That actually looks like, you know, old paper instead of, I don't know. I just had, it was just too dark. That ink is kind of, it's potent. So be careful with it if that's what you use. And then I also uh, punched an eyelet in the back of um, the back cover. You don't have to do that. Um, if you're going to want to use a button closure, you can just punch a hole. And then I thought, I can see. Let's. The other thing I want to do is I got out this uh, gilding wax. Uh, it's like a golden metallic wax. And I just wanted to kind of touch up around the edges of the pages. I guess we'll just we'll maybe do that first. Now I just take my finger and I'm really just rubbing right along the edge. I'll tell you, sometimes this wax gets pretty dried out. I don't know if you're supposed to add water, but I do. Just a little bit. And it uh, reactivates it. So you can't see this just super well, probably. But I think it just brings out the gold that's in this jelly uh, print. And kind of takes it up a notch. And doesn't take very long to dry at all. All right, I've already got the front done. It looks good. I may add just a touch where you can see it from the back. Oh, that looks nice. All right, guys, I'm going to speed this up. And not make you have to suffer through the... <laughs> Long, boring parts. Okay, um, I also forgot to mention that I found a little cutout from a quote. Uh, this was a printable off of Etsy that I bought, and I did uh, just cut it out and ink the edges with some vintage photo from Tim Holtz. And then I got some very thin cardboard, and I actually glued two pieces together because it was... Uh, too skinny, too flimsy, and I am going to go around this as well with the gold, and I did strip some of that paper off just to reveal the corrugated part.
and I'm just going to go through and brush a little on here and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got all the gold wax on and I think that is looking good. It's dry and so what I'm going to do is just grab some of that art glitter glue again and glue this on top of the cardboard. Just kind of stick that down in the middle. And that sets up usually pretty quick. <sighs> so cute. All right. Now, let's see. Let's get our button on first. So we need to do our button and our elastic for the closure. So I had picked this out originally, this super skinny little elastic. But then when I put my eyelid in, I was noticing that um, I don't know if I can tie a knot big enough to keep that from coming through there. So we may have to do some gluing. All right. And then um, we got to keep in mind when you're making this piece of elastic that we are setting up to be at our uh, journal to be able to add more pages. So you want to give it a little bit of room to expand as you add pages and you don't want to have to pull too tight and that you know what i bet that's too short oh let me shut the door i can hear somebody on the phone Okay, let me tie a knot and just see what happens. Let me measure this first. That way I can tell you all how long I cut it. So, two, three, it was about six inches total. Now see if I can get it back through the hole. That metallic wax dries really fast, which is awesome. I'm just going to tie a knot and see that's going to be big enough. You know what? I think that might work. Oh, no, sure enough, it's not going to. Dang it. All right. So what we will do is put that back through there. And then... We'll have to glue that down. But I think I'm going to cut it a little bit longer because uh, I need more tails to glue down. So that one was six. Let's go with scratch that. We're going 12. <laughs> we'll be able to use that for something else later. All right. 12 inches guys so let's come through here let's see if we can get one knot let's see where we want this Let's 
get the insides. Just for an idea. Didn't have to be quite that long. Let's do another knot. So see how I've got those on top of each other? Let's see if that's... So the moral of this story is use a small eyelet if you're using small elastic. Now that's pretty good. That's holding. Okay. Like that, then that will go here. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on. Sorry, if you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. If anything comes out, feel free just to glue it back down. Okay, that's going to be good. It's going to give us a lot of room to be able to add pages. And depending on what kind of, like if you're doing collage and adding other fun stuff, this, you know, will get kind of thick. All right, so we'll go through and put our button in here. And when it's little bitty like this, with only 10 pages in it, this may be a little bit loose. But it's not going to be flopping open. But that will just give you extra room. Yeah. All right. That feels pretty snug. And then we can always glue these down. Staple them. We'll come up with something here in a minute. All right. So there's that. That'll be there. I'm going to go ahead and put this on. I'm really wanting to start doing more journals, like art journals, but I love junk journals. So I'd like to be able to kind of mix the two together because I just think that is so much fun. It's like all my favorite stuff mixed together so please make sure you subscribe and that your notification bell is black so that you can see when we get when I upload new videos all right so far so good now I got the hot glue gun out to put this on with See. We'll put it back just a little way. And we're going to stick him right there. Something else you could use is um, matte gel medium. Well, it doesn't have to be matte. Uh, but gel medium does a real good job of holding heavyweight things on. Don't stick your fingers in the hot glue. I kind of feel. Oh, that's good. You know, and if this. You could tie an extra knot. In it to shorten it up and just kind of make it adjustable.
And that way when it starts getting fat. There, that's good. Just tie more knots or untie them. Okay, I'm going to let that dry before I hook it on. Okay, and then I thought I wanted to put this probably down here somewhere, but it looked kind of plain. So I found some twine. This is super skinny twine. I don't know what they call it other than super skinny twine. <laughs> So I have some of that that I was going to kind of loop up, you know, and put underneath this. Not like that, but. And then I found some gold metallic thread, which I thought would kind of match the uh, overall theme. So I'm going to try to loop these all together and stick some up under. That cardboard. And I know there's probably a simple way to do this, but I don't know what it is. So I just kind of loop these things around. And I think that we're going to use hot glue on this, but I want to check. See, I don't like how it's, there we go. I don't like it to be too uniform. I want it to be kind of messy. All right. Give me just a minute and I'll be right back. Okay. So I just kind of wrapped it around my whole hand. And I'm going to stick just a little drop of glue. To kind of get this started here. And we can trim some off and add some to it. Let's see what it looks like. It's not too bad. Okay. I'm going to try to keep the glue under the cardboard, though, when the cardboard's going. want to secure all those little legs, all the little pieces in the middle. It's okay. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing, the gold thread. It just depends on how big you want your loops as to how many times uh, or like how many fingers you go around. But I don't want it to look like a bow. I'm trying to make it a little messy here. I'm gluing myself in there. I'm just going to spread the gold out a bit. So it's not all in one big blob. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, that's going to look so good. 
All right, so let's bring this down here. Sorry if y'all can hear my hubby on the phone. I tried shutting the door, but his voice is carrying. All right. I think that looks good. All right, let's glue her down. And put a big blob. In the middle so we can get all the thread just kind of hold that kind of pick some pieces out from below and above so that they actually stick out from underneath there didn't get very much gold on the bottom move that down there all right I can fiddle with it till your heart is content uh-oh, <laughs> it's a little bit crooked. All right, let me get a little bit on the edges. And a cool little tip for working with hot glue, if you have all those little spider webby things, then uh, just turn your heat gun on and lightly blast it with the heat gun and it'll just melt them and they'll disappear. I might have to do a little right there, that glue sticking out. Oh, doesn't it look good, guys? All right, that's going to work. Now I just got to figure out how to get that stuck in there. Let's see. Probably don't need to cut off just a little bit. Now we could put a staple right there and hold it with the staple. Which I might do. I don't know if I can get a staple stapler up that high. All right. Hang on. Let me see what I've got. Be right back. Okay. I got it figured out. Look here. Isn't she gorgeous? I just love, love, love how this turned out for a piece of our cardboard packaging. Look here. From this to this. And it cost us hardly anything. Love it. So let me show you how I did the back. All right. So I went through and glued for extra reinforcement and then I put a staple in there. And that way you could pull, you know, if you're having to pull that hard, you're going to be warping the board. So uh, it's not meant to be pulled on a ton, but 
it's also adjustable. So when you're like, well, now that you've stapled it down, how are we going to do that? Let me show you. Let's pick it out. And then you just undo this first knot. That made it longer. So then you just stick it right back through there. So now when you have more pages in here and a really fat art journal that you've got plenty of room it's not going to stay because it's not because it's loose but see you've got more space for that to go around and then i just took some more of that metallic uh, paste and went over the button just for an extra little something something and I think she turned out super cute guys I hope this was helpful um, I'm going to be doing lots more journals we're going to do different binding styles and uh, really elevate what we do on the inside so I hope you stick with me and I appreciate you hanging out with me today and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.